Throughout this series, we've covered some dark, disturbing, and downright foul moments in comics. We've come a long way in the last 99 parts, and in this, the 100th entry into messed up moments in comics, I wanted to do something truly special. So today, we're going to be looking at a twisted take on some of Marvel's biggest characters. That's right, friends. Join me today as we cover Warren Ellis' Marvel Ruins in this 100th episode special of messed up moments in comics that made us go... Hey, yo, what the fuck? This two-issue comic is told through the perspective of former photographer for the Daily Bugle named Philip Sheldon, saying he's writing all of this because it's all gone wrong. And it's pretty evident from the first page, where we see Sheldon looking up to see the Avengers Quinjet getting blown out of the sky by the United States National Guard. We are literally on page one and we've already seen the Avengers perish. Well, buckle up, friends. Because this is not the standard Marvel Universe we've all been used to, we are in for one bumpy ride. The story goes back a few years and discusses how Iron Man gained his iron suit. And it turns out, after helping end the Vietnam War, he went back to California, where the Californians are trying to overthrow the government and secede from the United States. A National Guardsman threw a grenade while Tony was there, and the shrapnel hit him. Originally, he went there to try to broker peace between the Californians and the rest of the United States, like he had done in Vietnam. However, this time, after getting hit with shrapnel from a grenade, pretty much galvanized him to join the Californians in their effort to secede. We see Sheldon looking at a copy of the Daily Bugle, which reads that a young boy named Matthew Murdock has passed away. You know, the character who in another world would have grown up to be Daredevil. But in this grim reality, he was given brain damage and radiation burns after being hit by that truck. Sheldon's approached by a strange looking man at the bar who threatens to take him out right then and there if he doesn't buy him a drink. And it turns out that, that strange looking man was actually Wolverine, who in this universe had been poisoned by the adamantium skeleton that he'd used as a weapon for so long. You could see his skin begins to rot and fall apart as it's slowly poisoning him from the inside out. But boy! Boy, does this story not hold any punches. As we find out that T'Challa, the Black Panther, ended up joining the Black Panther Party in San Francisco. Hawkeye ended up getting physically removed from this world by a member of the California military, and Scarlet Witch ended up betraying the Avengers and giving over damning information to the United States Department of Justice. So that way, she could be protected from any kind of repercussions for all of the heinous actions committed. We cut to a nuclear testing facility located in Nevada. You know, Basically Area 51. It's been turned into a Kree housing facility, more or less. The Kree have been housed there for years. Long enough for those who were put in there in captivity to have children. And have these walls be all they've ever known. But before he's allowed to visit the Kree civilization, he has to don a radiation hazmat suit. Once Philip enters the facility, he's met with a semi-familiar face. That being Marvell, otherwise known as Captain Marvel. No, not that one! In this universe, the Kree were on a mission from the Supreme Intelligence to take over Earth. And as they were on their way to, they ran across the Silver Surfer's corpse floating through space! Which, let's just take a minute to say how insane this panel is. And the justification for the Silver Surfer's death is that he was once a mortal and was used to, you know, breathing air. He didn't really know what to do in that situation and panicked, clawing open his own chest ending himself. Yeah, okay, sure, I guess that's one way to bench one of the most powerful characters in Marvel. But the power cosmic was still embedded in Norinrad's body, and radiated out and ended up cancelling out the Kree's cloaking devices, which alerted the nations of Earth to their presence, who took swift action and nuked the ever-loving crap out of them, blowing them out of the sky and disfiguring most of them. All of the surviving Kree were covered in scars, open wounds and sores, and cancer. Marvel even tells Sheldon that in 30 years, there will be no more Kree left, as they all would have been wiped out from the radiation. And this is when we find out that the President of the United States at this time is Professor Charles Xavier. And Washington DC has basically turned into a hellscape under his rule. 
Philip Sheldon ends up meeting up with an old friend, Nick Fury. But once it comes out that Sheldon's writing a book about all the heroes, Fury snaps, punching him in the stomach and tells him that he has no further connection with the Avengers, and he doesn't want any part of this. Sheldon tells Fury he just wants some information about Captain America, but it looks like Fury's had enough of this, and he's about to shoot Sheldon right in the face. When? Fury ends up shooting a dog that was about to attack Sheldon instead. It's then when a familiar face shows up, and it's none other than Jean Grey, reduced to turning tricks on the street for $20. And she solicits herself to both men, before Nick Fury starts unloading his pistol right into her, ending her on the spot. And if that wasn't enough, Fury tells Sheldon that he's got to take a short nap now, and says that he took out Captain America with a Patriot missile last week, then ends himself right there on the spot, before it cuts to a bloodied magazine showing Galactus floating lifeless through space. Later on, Philip meets with Rick Jones, friend of Bruce Banner, the Hulk, and he recounts the day that the bomb went off, which normally would have given Hulk radioactive powers. We can see Rick sitting down playing his guitar as Bruce Banner comes flying in on a motorcycle trying to get him to go away, and they actually throw some insults at each other, before Rick realizes that Bruce is trying to save him. And, after he fell into a trench, he saw the atomic blast, as Bruce starts to burn. His flesh begins to become dark and green, and tumors begin to erupt all over his body. But, this is not the Hulk that we know. And the first issue ends with Phil leaving Rick Jones' apartment, finding the Punisher shot and bled out on the side of the road. Issue number two begins with Phil Sheldon sitting next to someone on a plane. They look very nervous and begin digging into their own skin. And that's when we realize this is Mystique. Yeah, you know, the same Mystique from the retconned origin of Nightcrawler, who's now apparently his dad, but that's a story for another time. Mystique began developing multiple personality disorder, which split her mutation, causing her to basically rip apart into multiple different pieces right there in the seat, until she kind of exploded with nothing left. Once the plane lands, if that wasn't enough, some feds push an old man in a crowd, who turns out to be Magneto. He was covered with a makeshift device that was confused for an explosive. However, it was very far from that. In fact, that was actually a device that Magneto was using to keep his magnetism at bay, and with it now destroyed, anything magnetic was being pulled directly towards him. That includes glasses guns, fillings from people's teeth, the iron from these people's blood, everything, including the plane that Phil just showed up on, until... After the airport incident a few days go by, Phil now visits a prison in Texas, where the warden is no other than Wilson Fisk himself, Kingpin. But this is no ordinary prison. The inmates seem to be the X-Men. We see Scott Summers locked up in a cell, his eyes fused shut, permanently blinded. Fisk begins to torture the poor man, smashing his hand with a club against a bar as he walks by. We see Nightcrawler survives by eating little bits of himself, a powerful mutant forced to self-cannibalize. We even see people like Quicksilver. He's had his arms and legs removed. And after a little bit of time, Phil's done being in that prison and leaves. We see in this world that Donald Blake is not actually the alter ego of Thor. In fact, he's just a regular guy who may have gone a little crazy, thinking himself to be the actual Norse god. And Emma Frost is now a cult leader. Great. Ghost Rider, still a stuntman, but this time, the way he gets his signature flaming skull look is by as actually lighting his own face on fire with gas as he does a jump. Honestly, this is probably one of my favorite alterations that they made in the comic, though. Phil reminisces about all of the different superheroes, but unfortunately, this is not the reality he lives in. We then meet up with Ben Grimm, who, at this point, is the only character who actually seems to have anything going for him in this universe. He explains how he met Johnny and Sue Storm, and Reed Richards. But in this universe, he did not go on that fatal flight, and they really didn't get powers. In fact, Ben Grimm shows Phil all of the photos of what was left of the bodies, of what would have been three of the Fantastic Four. But there was no pictures of Victor Von Doom. 
As the book winds down, we see Phil walking through the city. He puts his hand to his head, and we can see some weird scarring on the back of his hand. He said he really wished he had time to craft this book, but that weasel kid Parker stole his time from him. And that's when we find out what happened to Peter Parker. Let me ask you a question. Did you really think we would get through an entire two-issue story about every terrible thing that could have possibly happened to all of the Marvel superheroes with nothing happening to Spider-Man, the boy that's literally Marvel's punching bag? No, of course you didn't. They were just saving Spider-Man to the very end. And good lord, do they not hold back. They said that Peter was a lousy photographer, worked freelance to try to pay for his college tuition, was a know-it-all, and messed everything up by being bitten by a radioactive spider and got infected with a mutated virus. And before he started showing symptoms of this horrific skin-peeling rash, he showed up to the Daily Bugle and infected Phil, who, after recounting this story, collapses on the sidewalk no longer here. Gone. This two-issue story could have made up countless entries into this series of messed up moments in comics, but I wanted to make episode 100 a little special and cover the entire thing. And with that, we close the book of Marvel Ruins. Thank you so much for watching and being a part of these 100 episodes. It really does mean a lot to me, and if you enjoyed this, go ahead and leave a like. If you'd like to be a part of the ongoing series, subscribe for more. Feel free to leave a comment with your favorite messed up moments in comics. If you'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a member. New entries in messed up moments in comics are released daily, so check them out. And new videos are uploaded every Saturday. Once again, thank you to all of you who enjoyed messed up moments in comics so far. And as always, have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next one.